Okay, hi everyone. Um, I will today talk about effective communication in IT projects as a success factor and why I think that women are the perfect match. Um, first of all, I want to just give you a sh really, really short introduction about me uh, so you can understand why this topic really matters to me. Um, I've had a lot of zigzag in my career and also in my education, but what counts um, for my job as an IT project manager today and for my talk is I'm educated in project management and I have a really big passion for communication and I would describe myself as tech enthusiast so I'm really interested in technology. What I'm not, I'm not a skilled developer, architect or other kind of expert. Why I'm telling you that? Because usually if you look at the typical job profile of IT project managers it would like look like this. Um, mainly they're educated in IT, they have studied IT, they have experience in software development, were developing it before, they have expert knowledge in the area which they are managing the projects, e.g. app development or something like that. Um, usually they also have know-how and requirements analyzed because they're talking to the customers and bringing in their ideas and stuff like that. And then on a very, 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 very low level, they have experience in project management and should be analytical thinkers. I've told you before that I'm talking about the importance of communication and project management. Why do I have the idea that this is important if it's not written on the typical profile of a job project manager? Well, actually, it's my experience. Um, just to give an example, I have never ever in my life opened an SAP system, but I have been managing some SAP projects in the last years. So why is this possible? I say because communication does matter more than the technical skills. Why is communication so important? Well, if you look um, in the PM book, which is the Bible of project management, so every project manager knows about this book, you find um, the answer to the question, why is communication so important? Because project managers spend most of their time communicating. You have a lot of different stakeholders. You have your project team, you have your customer, you have the salespersons which are interested in the project, you have controlling, uh, which is asking why is the margin so low, you have the line managers which are giving you the resources, you have suppliers and on and on and on and on. And all these people and groups um, have different interests into the project, they have different expectations, um, they have different knowledge about the project and they might even have different cultural backgrounds. But what they all have in common is they are influencing your project. So your goal as project manager is to align all those people, to build bridges, um, because you are responsible for delivering the successful project. Um, if you want to know why is communication so important, you don't just have to look in the box, you also can look into practice. If you're looking at the top 10 reasons why IT projects fail, well, the reasons are mostly related to communication or competence. If you just screen very shortly the list, you won't find any problem which is related to technical issues. Yes, there are projects failing because it's not possible to deliver what the customer wants, because it's not possible to implement it. But the major part is really related to problems with communication or the project manager does not having the right competences. So if I could define what the perfect project manager should be like, it would be the following. He or she should have an education in project management. He or she should have technical understanding. With technical understanding, I mean that you should be able to grasp what your developers, what your architects, what your testers, what your customers is telling you. But you don't need to be an expert who's uh, involved into detailed discussions. You should be a team leader because ultimately um, project management is about building the team, keeping the team and delivering with your team, because it's clearly a team effort, your project. You should be good in analytical thinking. Um, when you start the project, what you have to do is like <coughs> break the big goal into really small, 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 small steps so you can do the project plan and plan how you're going to achieve that goal. 
and analytical thinking clearly helps in that point. Um, you should be really good in quick grasping because you will be overloaded with lots of information um, from all directions and you need to understand them quickly and quickly decide is this necessary or can I just forget it. And last but not least, you should be a great communicator. If you're a great communicator and if you're more like my description on IT project management, what would the benefit be for your project? Well, actually, first of all, you can focus on the overall, overall view of the project. If you're coming from a technical point of view, um, you're most likely drawn into technical discussions with your developers and architects and involved in things and, and stuff you should not be involved because you should be the one managing the whole project and not any details. Um, you can specialize on project management. So you're not the one who's missing the competences and you won't be the reason why your project fails because you have no idea how you uh, should manage your resources or budgets or how you should discuss with the customer and negotiate change requests. Um, if you're coming from another point of view, you can offer different perspectives. What do I mean with that? Well, actually, um, let me explain it to you on a very easy example. If you want to drive a nail in the wall, you should usually be looking for a hammer. If I want to do that now, well, actually, I can't find a hammer. Um, so you need to think out of the box to solve that problem. Um, as a creative person, I might think, OK, maybe this MacBook is a good idea to use it to drive the nail in the wall. Um, usually, if you're like a tech-savvy person and really loving, you would not consider this as an option. So that I mean with um, offering different perspectives because you're really then able to suggest on the first few really stupid ideas how to solve a pro pro problem. Um, but in the end, this might lead to uh, solutions which nobody had thought after before. Um, you're also able really to focus on leading the team because this is your um, task. You are the project manager and ultimately responsible for your team. And last but not least, you can focus on fostering the communication because um, that is what is most important. If you really concentrate on communication, what would that mean to your project? Um, I would like to describe it on a really simple example. If you're organizing a party and you're asking to f uh, your friends for help and you're asking them, okay, could you bring the drinks to my party? And you're giving not any more directions to them then maybe you would end up with, I don't know, like a huge amount of orange juice and some coffee, but no water and no milk. If you would give them more structure and tell, okay, person A, you bring in the orange juice, B, water, C, coffee, four, milk, then you would have everything organized and structured and everything in place. But then still the other persons would not know what the other persons are doing. So the person bringing the coffee would maybe worry, oh, if I'm bringing coffee, are oh, we then having milk? So maybe he would go and buy both things because he wants to make sure that everything is fine then. So if you want to achieve transparency, you tell all your project team members what the others are doing. So that creates um, more impact on your team. The next thing is uh, what you create with good communication is trust. If you're communicating openly, not withholding any information from your project team, just tell it, telling them what it's all about, um, they eventually will start to trust you. And it's really important because you can't work with a team who is not trusting you that you know what you're doing. And ultimately, <coughs> what you receive also with the first three points, but with good com communication is responsibility. Um, why do you need responsibility? Because if you have a big project with, I don't know, like 15 or 20 people doing things, you need to be sure that if you tell them that they should do this, on time that you really do it, that you're really, really responsible for delivering because if they're not delivering, they're putting the project at risk. Um, and if you are communicating openly, getting structure in there, being transparent, achieving the trust of your team, you will create all this responsibility. Um, 
I've thought when preparing the talk, what are my rules of effective communication? Uh, what I'm doing in my daily life to communicate with my team and all the stakeholders. Um, the first thing which came to my mind was never assume anything. That sentence is not from me. Um, I've heard that sentence from a really great project management trainer in a train training and it's since era sticking in my head. What do I mean with that? If I would now start talking ab ab about Apache um, and I would assume that everyone knows what I'm talking about, I would be completely wrong. Why? Because Apache could ever either be a helicopter, it could be an American Indian, or it could be, in terms of software development, a special kind of software. So never assume anything, ask questions, no matter how silly they are. Because if you are asking persons questions, you make them think. Um, second, you should listen. I know that it's quite stretched right now <coughs> in media. Well, you should be caring, you should be listening, You're, the other person is feeling better if you listen to him. Well, that's uh, everything okay and um, yeah, really important. But what I mean is if you start the question and the other person stops talking and you listen, you give him time to talk. And if he or she is talking about what's right now in her head, it might be the first time that he's talking about that. And if people start to talk about things, they might even notice that problems are not that big as they saw before. Or they might realize, oh, I have forgotten to think about that, but it's really important. So with listening, you give people time to think about things. And um, that hopefully is then good for your project. You should adapt your communication to the audience. What uh, do I mean with that? If I am running late in my project, um, I would have a meeting with my project team. And then I would say to my team, well, guys, or girls, or whatever, um, in the original plan, we should now or, uh, already have finished work package four, but we're still in work package three. And the project team would know what does it mean, that we are really lagging behind a lot. Um, if I then would go to the line manager, because I need the resources for a longer time, because I can keep my original plan, and I would tell him the same thing, he had, would have no idea what I want to uh, know from him. Um, I would have to go there and tell him, okay, you're running late. We are need in the need of uh, two months more time. Are the persons already planned for other projects or can I have them for longer? That, uh, that's what I mean by you should adapt your communication to the audience. Fourth, you should be consistent in your message. You should never tell uh, different persons, different things about one topic because that ultimately will come out and lead to a lot of misunderstanding and question marks on the persons and will give you a lot of trouble. Fifth, you should plan your communication. Um, that might sound a bit weird if you're not into project management because how should I plan my communication? Um, you have a lot of different stakeholders and usually you are addressing them on a regularly based basis. So by planning communication, um, I would mean that you sit down in the beginning of the project and um, develop a plan where you write down, okay, I want to meet with my project team two times a week. That will be on Tuesday and on Thursday, then you plan the meetings. I want to uh, meet with my customer every two weeks to keep him updated and to clarify the most important questions. Um, I'm going to send a report to controlling once a month. Um, and it's really, really helpful if you have planned that upfront because uh, when it gets really stressful, that's um, what you can rely on and, and stick to. It's your guideline uh, how to keep the communication and the information flowing. Um, you should choose the right channel. Usually, um, I'm a person who loves to talk face to face to the pro persons. But maybe if you are running late in the project and you, you know that you would have to pay a penalty if you're not delivering on time. And you know that you're running late because the customer is not answering your questions. 
it might not be the best option to talk to him face to face because when it then comes to the situation that you need to pay the penalty, you have no proof. Um, then it might be better that you write an email um, and you have proof that you have told the customer, okay, this might be a problem and it's your duty to deliver me the information because I'm running late uh, and it's not my fault, but it's yours. Um, seventh, you should adapt the communication to the person and situation. If you have a bug or another problem and you really need a quick, quick, quick solution and you know that the developer who's, can, who's able to solve the problem is really focused on his uh, work and never ever reading any emails, um, it might not be the best option to write um, that person an email with like urgent, um, please can you fix that because you will, waiting be f we will be waiting forever. You should really go to the developer and tell him, okay, I need it right now and it's very urgent and the customer is a real pain in the ass for me now. Um, really important, um, you should find your own communication style. Um, it's, it's not for any good if you have a person who is like communica communicating really good and you see him as a role model and you try to be like him because you won't be authentic. So you should really do your own thing and how you do that, you learn by experience. Communication is nothing you can learn from the books. Well, you can read, you can get input there, you can get ideas, but ultimately you need to go out there and try different things and see how they will affect your project team um, and the success of your project. And, well, maybe the most important thing, you should never ever stop to communicate. When you are stressed out, when problems are coming up, you will focus on problem solving and at not informing anyone else and stuff like that, but then you're cutting off the communication and that's um, the least thing you need in that situation. So, um, why IT, woman and communication? Why do you think this is a perfect match? Um, actually, if you look at the current numbers of uh, women in major tech companies, you wouldn't think that this is really a perfect fit. Um, I've pulled here a statistic which is showing like the most fanciest tech companies in the world, Microsoft, Google, Twitter, Facebook. You would think that these companies, or at least I would think that these companies, as they are very cool and have a cool image and are good uh, places to work at, would be attracting more women than other companies. But also these women companies have a very low percentage of women. Overall, it's 30% and when it comes to tech and leadership position, the per percentage is even dropping. So how can I get the idea that this is a real perfect match? Because I have the opinion that women are really having the perfect skills for that position. Um, I've tried to explain to you why communication is so important. Um, women, in my opinion, are natural communication talents. Women love to talk a lot and even though they are getting on the nerve, <laughs> nerves of a uh, very person with that, well, with talking a lot and then passing information, you keep the communication flowing and that's really, really important and vital. Women are really, really good uh, in designing and aligning. There exist studies uh, which, have which clearly prove that. What do I mean with designing and aligning? Um, at the start of the project, you need to split the project down into small steps, as I said before. Um, and after splitting down these uh, tasks and steps, you need to align them with the team and explain to the team, okay, you're doing that and that is depending on and here and okay, why, why you need to do that? Okay, because we need to reach that goal. Um, that's really, really important um, that you just not only can design what the project plan should look like, but also align it with all of them. Women are really, really good at building bridges. Um, it's even stated in the PM book, the Bible of project management, that building, projects, building bridges is really important for uh, effectively managing projects. Um, and usually women are really good in, in going to other persons, understanding, okay, what is your point? What is your position? What do you want? Going to the other person, asking them as well, and then try to get them on the same page and working them towards one goal. 
women have usually a better emotional in intelligence than men. Um, project management is, as I said, a team effort. It's about building the team and keeping the team. You're always working with people. So emotional intelligence, understanding what moves the people, what uh, makes them feel good or bad, helps a lot in that task. Uh, and last but not least, curiosity. Um, I've said before, you should never assume anything but ask a lot of questions. Well, if you're a curious person, that comes to you by, natu by nature. Um, it should not be real difficulty to women to ask questions and why, 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 why. Uh, we've already heard that also in requirements engineering that it's important to ask why, but also it's important in project management. I think that these skills are really hard to learn, but if you bring them, you have a good base for project management. But I have the opinion that all the tech stuff you can learn because it's, it's very logical and if you're inter interested in it, um, you will learn it by uh, training on a job, doing it, by reading, whatever. So, why should a woman now choose to go into project management? Um, again, I sat down and thought about my reasons why I do really love this job and I really love it. Um, first of all, it's a real versatile profession. You have to communicate to different stakeholders, to sales, to your team, to the customer, to controlling, to whatever. You have to manage the budget, the timeline, the resources, the quality of the project. You have to deal with the problems which arise and all the challenges. So it really never gets boring. Uh, yeah. It's challenging by nature. Um, I've done now a lot of pro projects and to be honest, there was not a single project without any challenge. The challenging challenges are coming anyway, even though this project might look like it's very easy and we've done it before and we surely can deliver that, well, uh, the challenges will come. Um, and the challenges are a lot of fun to solve. Um, I've said before that the, the numbers of women in tech is even dropping when it comes to leadership position. Well, if you go into project management, you are in a leading position. Um, leading people is nothing which is always easy, but it's a lot of fun um, and it's really rewarding if you are able to work with people, to develop them, to see um, what makes them happy, to see their progresses and stuff like that. Which brings me to my next reason. Project management is really rewarding. Not only because you're working with people, uh, be but because you're able to solve a lot of challenges and most likely you're able to see the project, the product, the solution, whatever you're creating grow and then finally you can deliver it and hand over to the customer who is hopefully then happy. Um, you have a lot of great development possibilities. You can start very s in a very small project management position, maybe as project assistant or something like that, just managing a work package. Um, and then you can develop yourself, like taking your first project, taking bigger projects, um, getting a program manager, um, getting as me like a team lead for project management, and then maybe, I don't know, in some years being head of project management office or something like that. Um, there are a lot of different ways. Actually, a sixth point, I wrote there, good income. Um, I'm not a person who is really motivated just by money. Um, I'm motivated by fun. But what a good income really offers you is a great freedom to operate. Because if you have your own income and you're not depending on anyone else, um, you're able to lead the life you really want and to do with, with the money which you earn in your uh, profession, whatever you want. You can travel, you can, I don't know, build a startup, you can invest it in startups. Um, there are a lot of options, uh, which then also makes you happy. <laughs> uh, and last but not least, because um, communication matters. Um, I love to communicate, I love to talk, pe to, talk to people, um, I love to talk about my job, I love to pass on information, and you all can do that in project management. Um, I've been talking now a lot of women and communication, so I want to close my talk with a quote uh, from Anne Moralindberg, 
which was uh, one of the earliest aviation pioneers and who has said, good communication <coughs> is just as stimulating as black coffee and just as hard to sleep after. So have fun communicating. <laughs>